So wow, this is this is what Tim really does, making me <laughs> just look bad at everything. Um, you could totally press this into leather. I know. Device. I need to. Um, the next one before I do like some fancy sanding on it, I need to just get some leather out and press one of these designs. Into yeah, I, I kind of want to steal <laughs> and then make some armor with some really fancy pants Kumiko. Yeah. So. Um, Kim, tell us what kumiko is. Yeah, so kumiko is known as a Japanese art form of basically taking really small pieces that have um, all these little angles on them mm -hmm. and pushing them into a little frame. So um, soji um, is very close to kumiko, so that would be almost if you just had the grid work. Um, and it's oftentimes used as like maybe creating really simple grids that you might see on a door or a privacy kind mm -hmm. of screen and then once you start adding all of these repeat angles to make a pattern in it that's when it launches into being kumiko so just a small difference um, and so there's a lot of really traditional designs uh, that are most so you mostly see here is the asa noha uh, pattern which is this hemp leaf and the hemp leaf is shown up in a ton of cultures around a lot of good fortune and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, if you're just seeing, this is the hemp leaf just rotating in a different direction than this one over here. So just by oh, giving it a little spin instead of e everything meeting in the middle, right. pressing everything outward. Um, and then, you know, intentionally creating a lot of negative space because it's, you're, it's almost so intense for your eyes to look at. Um, that it's nice to give it some nice negative space to frame it in. Um, and so you're seeing how it can be used. Well, give, them a, give them a proper look at that. Yeah. Uh, just as a box top. So you have just a simple box, but then you line it with some paper here. So some paper that has a lot of natural things in it. Um, and that's what's also happening behind these designs here is adding paper to it and so it just helps kind of if you have it on a white wall it's just going to really help it stand out mm -hmm. um, another place that kumiko is used a lot is on like entertainment cabinets where mm -hmm. you need a remote to go through oh okay and so you wouldn't put the paper there but it kind of takes away all the ugliness that might be from um, all that electronic stuff down there um, i see so uh on yeah. a side note my my buddy danny who's done much of the woodwork at my house um, in our bathroom, we have shoji screens underneath the bathroom sink because I do screen printing at home. And so you can actually slide the shoji screens aside to pull out the screen printing center and work on this massive bathroom counter. But we used a fiberglass vinyl uh -huh. instead of the rice paper because rice, get wet. What? <laughs> rice paper doesn't do well with water. So yeah. for a bathroom, it's a terrible idea. But the stuff is like industrial strength oh, sure. it's hard to pierce so, yeah um yeah you, there's a ton of great products you're right that it could be backed by for yeah sure so i'll hook you up with some if you want to do yeah. a test run but um this is a beautiful design to to see the backer to go with that um, because i had a very minimal shoji and i did not know this was possible and then kim started doing these videos and i was like what <laughs> and it's really fun similar to leather working you don't need an insane amount of tools mm -hmm. like you can buy just this flat stock without all the little notches cut in it at a craft store so you don't have to have all the big equipment that made all these flat mm -hmm. same size pieces of wood so what type of wood is this yeah um i use two different types of wood so basswood's really commonly used which mm -hmm. is really great for carving and it's so softer and it's known for being really clear without knots and straight grain yeah. Yeah. Um, they also use it to carve ducks for hunting. Yes, wood one. carvers love it because the grain isn't super strong, like mm -hmm. even maple, you know, where yeah. it just wants to like tear out at all these, where it just dives into new directions. <laughs> wanders so, off. Yeah, so basswood's known to be just very linear. Um, and then you can also use pine or okay. a spruce, you know, and it'll change the shade, but as long as you pick clear varieties of it, you're gonna have great results still. And so how is this held together? Yeah, um, some glue, some not glue. Uh, so when you're making these frames, I'll try getting one that you can actually see. 
So I have just, I use a toothpick and I have a little cup of wood glue and I just dab the toothpick and before I press these two pieces together, uh -huh. I use wood glue on all the outside pieces. You can kind of see on this one that my frame isn't the same size all around, so like this pokes out. And this piece here is eventually going to go into something recessed of another box that I'm working on. And so I know that I'm going to have to use a hand plane and to perfectly fit this insert in. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what happened on these guys as well. So you need, you're going to be doing a lot of sanding and a lot of little chisel work and a lot of little hand plane work to get it to press perfectly on all this. Because let me tell you, as much as this looks like perfect squares, they're not. <laughs> they're not. So this requires no clamping though. You're just putting the glue between the wood and it's such a nice delicate fit yeah, they, that the, the glue wicks between the surfaces and then it's just held in by friction yeah. until the glue sets. Yeah. Which is great. Yeah. Because exactly. we, we were talking about clamping in the last video, right? Yeah. Well, and I have a lot of clamps and that most people don't. However, the, you do use clamps. Um, so I have little blocks of wood. Mm -hmm that have an angle cut on them so that my chisel can find what that angle is and then slice right across where um, you know all these fun little angles are that need to be fit in there so i have a block that's at 45 and one that's at i think it's 22 and a half and one that's would it be so you have pitch yeah. chisel guides exactly so you're always cutting the same so i do need to clamp those to my work surface because i don't have a nice right. workbench vice here at, I, well, I was imagining trying to get like little tiny clamps to hold all these <laughs> no. parts together and no. you know, as a jeweler, I'm like, no, no. So <laughs> the, these have enough friction in them mm -hmm. that while I'm building out all the parts, so these are ones that have already been glued in because I worked on that design first, but all of these pieces oh, right those here. Those just lift right out. Wow. They, so they haven't been glued in and I won't glue them in until I make all of these pieces and I see that they fit well. Sure. Because then I'll take a little block of wood that's essentially um, shaped like this square here and I'll press it out. Uh -huh. That way as I'm gluing them I can put them back in the same orientation because again you try not to make everything uniquely shaped yeah. but you'd be surprised how hard it is to make sure each of these little squares are the same. So this diagonal is not going to necessarily be the exact same length as that. Uh -huh. Even though I had a stop block set for them to be, and then all of a sudden I found out the one didn't fit out of the three of them. So one will be a unique shape. <laughs> We're not perfect. We're yeah. human. Yeah. But like, you'll never know. Like, yeah. I mean, it has such an overall, once you look at the whole aesthetic, um, your eye doesn't pick up any of those inconsistencies and um, you know there's plenty of human factor of like there might be just a little hair of not them coming together sure and so one of the last steps is, is that you do a, a sanding with your sander or you can do, do sandpaper just on a flat surface and get you know all of these to be exactly flush with each other and it'll kind of highlight maybe where something just like the tip of a toothpick didn't come together and so you can just put a little dab of wood glue there and then sand it again. It just fills it right yeah, up. Exactly. Beautiful. So that's great. That's that.